Regular meeting number three, 33 will come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Would you please extend the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> this evening, uh, we have um, Hindu priest and officiant, Mr. Bhakti Rizal, who will come and lead us in prayer. He'll be assisted by Bhutanese neighborhood leader, Mr. Pakril. Please come. Welcome. Namaste. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Savirjam Karava Vahai Tejasvina Baditamastuma Vidvisa Vahai Om Doho Santi Rantariksha Gung Santi Prithivi Santi Rapaha Santi Roka Dayaha Santi Banaspataya Santi Biswe Deva Santi Saravagung Santi Santi Reva Santi Sama Santi Redi Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jotirigamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Santi Om Santi Om Santi The prayer part is done. I'm reading the meaning now. The meaning is Om, may he protect us both together. May he nourish us both together. May we work conjointly with a great energy. May our study be vigorous and effective. May we not mutually dispute. May we not hate any. Om, let there be peace in me. Let there be peace in my environment. Let there be peace in the force that act on me. Om, may there be peace in heaven. May there be peace in the sky. May there be in the earth. May there be peace in the water. May there be peace in the plants. May there be peace in the trees. May there be peace in the guards, in the various worlds. May there be peace in Brahman. May there be peace in all. May there be peace, in, peace indeed within peace. Give me the peace which grows within me. Om, peace, peace, peace. Om, may all become happy. May all be free from illness. May all see what is auspicious. May no one suffer. Om, peace, peace, and peace. Thank you. Thank you so much for leading us. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Clerk, call the roll, please. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. 
This week's communications received by the city's clerk's offices are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read in the record? Not at this time. Thank you. Are there any resolutions from member of council? Councilmember Elizabeth Brown. Thank you, President Harden. I don't have a resolution tonight, but I do want to make a quick announcement. Um, uh, last Thursday, Auditor Megan Kilgore and I released a report highlighting the importance of maintaining Title X funding in Ohio. This is a federal program that provides access to contraceptive care and reproductive health care for low-income, uninsured, and underinsured individuals, including 10,000 patients who utilize these services right here in our city of Columbus. Across Ohio, 87 health facilities received $8.7 million in Title X funding to serve nearly 94,000 patients last year. The Trump administration's plans to eliminate Title X funding for health centers that have any connection to abortion services despite, seg despite segregating um, those services from federal funds. Uh, their plans to do this threatens access to critically needed care across our state and in our city. This includes eliminating funding to abortion care, uh, or to, excuse me, eliminating funding for hospitals, doctors, and health centers uh, that make referrals to abortion care, which is effectively a gag rule that prevents doctors from having honest conversations about women's health. Ohio is among 14 states where more than 50% of Title X patients receive services through Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood serves more than 59,000 people in our state, and it is the sole Title X care provider in nine Ohio counties. If this funding is eliminated, many of those individuals have no alternatives to receive basic care, like screening for cervical and breast cancers, treatment for STIs, and other important family planning and contraception services. Health and economic security are inextricably linked. Public investments and reproductive health like the Title X program, save seven times the investment by preventing unintended pregnancies, increasing women's participation in the labor force, and improving the financial picture for families. Access to comprehensive health care isn't just good for women and their families, it's good for the economy. Auditor Kilgore, I want to thank you for your work in highlighting this economic effect, um, in putting together and sharing this important report. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, thank you, uh, Finance Chair Brown. You know, I think um, the role of the auditor sometimes is about storytelling and being able to put a story to the numbers. And this one is a, a story of, of significant magnitude. Um, when we started looking at the data, not only, you know, with 10,000 patients here in Columbus, that's just two health centers. And so when you look at a labor force, not only in our local economy, but in our state economy, there is no way this type of federally driven action will not significantly affect our economy. And that's the story. It's basic economics. Um, if any of the council members, Council President Hardin, um, want to discuss further, be happy to. And I think the next step is, uh, just so you are all aware, I, we've received a lot of phone calls from your colleagues around the state. And I'm, I'm very pleased about that because we've been able to show how we've been able to develop and drive that data. And uh, sharing that story uh, is very important. So thank you for that time, and thank you for co-authoring this with me. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, you can find the study on our website. Uh, if you go to columbus.gov backslash council and look under the uh, news media section, you can find the fully released report from Auditor Kilgore and myself. That is all I have, President Hardin. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Brown. Councilmember Mitch Brown. Councilmember Remy. I don't have much, but just a reminder that we have community hours this uh, Saturday, June 23rd at Panera Bread at 875 Bethel Road from 11 to 1230. So if anybody wants to come out and meet with my office, we'll be out there this Saturday from 11 to 1230. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Page. Thank you, President Hardin. I do have two announcements and then a resolution. My first announcement is about the Learning Skills to Lift Neighborhoods grant, which we this council first supported about two years ago, and I'm excited to again partner with the Department of Development to announce this housing grant program. We will host a Prince conference on June 20th at 10 a.m., and it will take place at 9799 Chicago Avenue, which is one of our initial award sites. This year we will award a total of $130,000 to nonprofit organizations, which transformed vacant and blighted structures or lots into productive parcels. 
The grants promote workforce development in the construction trades for youth and restored citizens. And my second announcement, Council Member Elizabeth Brown and I will convene the incentive study public hearing this Wednesday at 5 p.m. here in Council Chambers. The intention of the public hearing is to review the proposed changes to the city's use of tax incentives, which are based upon a series of public meetings that were held by Councilmember Elizabeth Brown and the Department of Development following the release of a study by HRNA. The study provided data regarding the city's use of tax incentives to support and encourage commercial, industrial, and residential development. And again, that public hearing is this Wednesday, June 20th at 5 p.m. And now I have a resolution 0195X-2018, and I would like to ask Mr. Jeff Starks to come to the podium to receive this resolution. And it is to recognize and honor Jeff Starks on receiving the 2017-2018 Columbus Crew SC Player Development Co-Coach of the Year Award. And I will let Jeff talk a little bit more about what he does volunteering with um, the crew, but he received this award and we are very proud of him. Jeff is also a past employee of City Council and is now with the Department of Public Safety. So I'd first like to move for adoption of this resolution. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stanziano, Tyson, President Harden. Jeff, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Councilmember Page, President Harden, members of council. Uh, I stand before you honored to be here and very, very humbled. Um, I've been coaching in the Columbus area for about 17 years now, and um, it's something that I enjoy very much. I work with kids from ages 6 to 18, and um, I really never thought in a million years I would be here receiving this honor, so thank you very much. Um, I first want to thank the Columbus Crew organization uh, for allowing me the opportunity to work with kids, not only on the field, but off the field. Uh, I'd also like to thank the parents of the Columbus Crew organization who thought enough of me and what I do for the kids to nominate me and then vote me co-coach of the year. Um, it was a tremendous honor for that. And most of all, uh, I want to thank my father, who actually was able to make it down here tonight. Uh, my father was my coach as a little kid growing up, and um, throughout my years, he always used to tell me when I get done playing that I'd have to give back somehow, whether it was coaching, whether it was refereeing, whether it was just getting involved with soccer. And I never really understood what he meant until I got involved with coaching kids. Um, the reward I've received for coaching kids has been probably the best thing I've ever done in my life. Uh, my father instilled to me not only to teach the game on the field, but it was very important to be a mentor off the field. Um, of course, every coach wants his player to go on and become a professional player, uh, but the reality is a very small percentage get a chance to do that, but the other large percentage of players go on to be productive members of our society, so it was really important for me to be a mentor. My dad was my coach and is my mentor, so I'm very proud to have him here tonight. Thank you so much, Jeff. Are there any other comments from Councilmember Mitchell Brown? Thank you, Councilmember Page. Uh, Jeff, uh, could your dad come up to the podium? I would love for my dad to come upstairs. Dad, you want to come up? This is my father, Richard Starks. Mr. Starks, uh, the senior Mr. Starks, uh, I guess you did teach him some of the right things. Uh, obviously, he worked for us at City Council and is now in public safety. Uh, but why don't you share briefly your history, sir, because uh, if I understand you're involved in the city for a long, long time as well. Well, uh, I can't top Jeff's uh, <laughs> resume there, but I'll try. Um, born and raised here in Columbus, I lived quite a few years of my life in New Jersey, and that's where I became involved in soccer and the parenting, the mentoring, and everything that it just, it just comes down and you just have to live it. Jeff has done a fantastic job. I think a lot of the youth programs here in Columbus have done wonderful work with the kids, all kids, and I hope we do even more. That's all I can say. Well, sir, it's important to acknowledge on a day after Father's Day, thank you for what you've been able to do with your son. It's appreciated. Again, congratulations. 
President Pro Tem. Thank you, President Hearn. Tonight I have two resolutions. Uh, this time I would like to invite Tara de Ghana of Chris and Amina Aldise Diske and some guests to the podium as I introduce resolution 0188K-2018 to recognize and celebrate June 20th, 2018 as World Refugee Day in the City of Columbus. The United Nations General Assembly adopted resolution 55-76 on December 4th, 2000 to officially recognize June 20th as World Refugee Day. Here in the City of Columbus, we have a proud history of welcoming refugees by offering a safe and thriving environment to support displaced persons and families seeking a new beginning by offering a network of resettlement agencies who are actively working with the most vulnerable refugees in Columbus regardless of their country of origin or religious beliefs. It is through this resiliency, self-sufficiency, and entrepreneurship that local refugees have established new lives and built networks of support and commerce which have, been a po which have had a positive impact in Columbus for new and existing residents. Refugees in Columbus have made a significant contribution to our economy by creating over 870 small businesses which employ more than 3,900 people. So it's my honor to have you speak and then I will motion for the resolution. I do want to thank the Department of Neighborhoods, uh, their wonderful leadership team and Director William Scott for your work uh, with these agencies and these wonderful people represented today. So with that, I'll turn the podium over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I would like to start with a quote from uh, Mayor Ginther because that's so meaningful in, our, in, in my life. And uh, I'm here to represent every single refugee and immigration, immigrant families today. Uh, the quote is, our immigrant population is part of the fabric of what makes Columbus so vibrant. They are our neighbors. We must not turn our backs on them now or ever. Unquote. Uh, thank you, Mayor, Columbus Mayor, and City Council members for their leadership in embracing in inclusive Columbus communities and consistently supporting nonprofits like Chris, uh, Jewish Family Services, ETSS, and BNCC, Bhutanese Nepali Community of Columbus. At times when these agencies are hit hard by the uh, approach of the current administration, the federal administration. Uh, under, under the current leadership of mayor, uh, city council members, and Franklin County commissioners, Columbus is becoming a safe haven for refugees and immigrant families. According to recent data, foreign-born residents make up to 9.3% of the city Columbus population and contributes $1.6 billion in tax. And uh, there are over 900 uh, refugee and immigrant on businesses in Columbus currently, and they, they hire over 23,000 uh, uh, jobs. They provide over 23,000 jobs. So I would like to say thank you so much for uh, uh, working hard to make this city a welcoming city. Uh, mm -hmm. Proud to call this city my home, because there is no any other home. My name is Tara Dungana. I came as a refugee to this country, to Columbus. Uh, specifically in 2009, and in 2011, started a business. Before that, in 2010, I started working for CRAES, Community Refugee and Immigration Services, <coughs> helping refugees uh, uh, gain those skills, all those skills they need, they need to succeed in the workplace, and I do employment. Uh, I have colleagues here who all work together, so I'd like to say again, thank you so much. I have another colleague here who wants to speak. Hello. My name is Amina Al-Siddiqui, and I'm known for the name Hint Deer on social media. Uh, I started um, expressing my ideas on social media about uh, extremism, about gender equality, and also about Western values in general. Uh, my ideas were fought by the extremists when back home when I was in Iraq. And then I moved here as a, as a visitor, and I claimed asylum. Um, my asylum case is still not decided yet, but I feel really proud for expressing those ideas on social media. Uh, at the time I came here, I had only 10,000 followers following me and believing in my ideas that I was expressing on social media. I also do uh, makeup tutorials, cooking tutorials, and um, daily video blogs on my YouTube channel. Um, 
You can check it out. It's hind deer. But I also um, send messages throughout these videos about um, how we should fight extremists, how we should um, uh, stand against ISIS and all the uh, chaos going on in my country. Um, now, uh, when I'm in Columbus, uh, I came in 2015. Uh, from 2015 till now, I got more and more followers on social media. Mm -hmm. At the time I came, I had only 10,000 followers. Now I have 2 million followers with more than 250 million views on my videos on YouTube. And I will continue conveying these mes messages um, on YouTube to change the minds of uh, younger generation in Iraq and everywhere in the Middle East. Um, I, was, I was impressed by the people here because they are really friendly and welcoming. Um, I work out at the gym and the other time I saw uh, an American person from Columbus who told me that he wants to absorb everything about every culture uh, at the gym. So whenever he sees some foreigner, he asks them about their culture. Um, he also told me that he doesn't care about the 10% of the population that is messing up in the Middle East, and he knows and understands that the majority of people are good people. So this is the message I want to convey to everyone here and to the world. Thank you. Thank you both for those comments. Seeing such a great crowd, would you all mind introducing yourselves, maybe your country of origin and organization you work with? And I'll ask before one of my colleagues asks you guys to do that. I'm Bhuvan Pekorel from Bhutan. My name is Frank Oswa from Uganda. Zerka Abid, I'm with my project USA and I'm originally from Pakistan. My name is Tariq Mohammed. I work for Jewish Family Services. I am a Somali and I've been a Buckeye for a very long time, so thank you. My name is Yusuf Mose. I'm from, uh, originally from Somalia. I've been here for 20 years, Columbus, Ohio. Thank you, guys. Hello, everyone. Hannah Khalid, originally from Lebanon, and I work with the Us Together Refugee Resettlement Agency and specifically with the Survivors of Torture Program. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Namaste. Uh, I'm Shudarshan Pakril. I'm with the Bhutanese Community of Central Ohio, and I came to the United States in 2010, and then I am Bakai, too. He took it. <laughs> Uh, my name is Hassan Omar, the Somali Community Association of Ohio. Actually, I was a refugee, but I've been in Columbus for the last 20 years, and this is my home. Thank, and I welcomed a lot of refugees who became a citizen. The refugee of yesterday are citizens of today. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Solomon Baba Tunde Ayedero. Solomon Baba Tunde Ayedero. My nickname is Tunde, for those, those of you. And uh, I'm from Nigeria originally. I came to the US 1983, the Ohio State University. And then uh, when I finished, I went to North Carolina, spent six years, and came back 1982. So I've been in Columbus uh, for most of my life. And I belong to Nigeria in the diaspora organization, NIDO. Hi, everyone. My name is Jacqueline Kifoko. I work at Community Refugees and Immigration Services. I've been working there for one year as a refugee organizer. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Salim, and I'm originally from Sudan. And I'm, I'm trying to let uh, my niece uh, t t to speak. Perhaps she speaks uh, better English than I, I do, because she grew yeah. Uh, would you please come? <laughs> yes. So introduce yourself. Yes. Hello, my name is Sarah Elmardi, and I'm from Sudan. 
Yes, uh, I'm, I'm part of the Sudanese community, and I'm also part of the African uh, community, and I'm currently uh, leading the Foundation for uh, Sustainable Development of Africa with, with other uh, Africans. So thank you for uh, the Council and for the President and for all of you who are uh, uh, making this uh, p proclamation of uh, the, uh, the World Refugees Day. Refugee Day. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Sarah Brown. I'm originally from Panama. Um, I am with the Ohio Hispanic Coalition. I was fortunate enough to be a, a young immigrant and be able to call Columbus my home. So proud Buckeye. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kausar Musa. I work with Somali Community Association of Ohio. I'm program coordinator. I have been in Columbus. Uh, three years almost, I have worked with different programs in Columbus, Ohio. I have participated programs that included uh, reducing infant mortality rate. Uh, I'm happy to be in Columbus, and I hope that uh, refugee bring different in Columbus. So thank you, guys. Hello, my name is uh, Josue Vicente, and I'm originally from Mexico. I work for the Ohio Hispanic Coalition and Latino Borders Action Fund. Thank you for recognizing the diversity in the city of us, uh, Columbus. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for what you're doing and for making Columbus a city that it is. I'm June Gutterman from Jewish Family Services. I'm a second generation American. My grandparents uh, fled Europe, um, Poland, Austria, Latvia and Russia. Uh, Jewish Family Services has been working with refugees, political asylees, and especially survivors of Nazi persecution for the last 110 years. And we're very proud of the work we do today and the help that you give us to accomplish that work. And I'm Karen Mosenter. I am American born but I have the honor and privilege of working with and serving refugees every day in my work with Jewish Family Services. Thank you very much for this recognition today of the very important part of our community. Thank you all. Do you have any questions or comments from my colleagues? Or someone was being shy. I guess we have one more. My name is Abdul Jaraiste, and I'm from Somalia, and I work with the Columbus Public Health Minority Health Office in I've been calling Columbus home for the last 10 years. Again, thank you all. It's our honor uh, to pass this resolution. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for adoption. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Harden. Adopt it. Second resolution, I would like to invite Meredith Harrison and Kate Gabriel from the Alzheimer's Association to the podium as I introduce resolution 0189X-2018 to designate June 2018 as Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month and June 21st, 2018 as the longest day. Alzheimer's is a disease that causes dementia amongst our aging population and affects almost 6 million Americans and 220,000 Ohioans. The Alzheimer's Association, the largest nonprofit funder of Alzheimer's research, provides critical support in meeting the needs of people affected by Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia through family and clinical support, early detection and diagnosis of disease education, advocacy, and research. June 21st, 2018 is recognized as the longest day in honor of the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, selected to signify that every day for a person living with Alzheimer's or serving as their caregiver is the longest day, while the whole month of June is dedicated to Alzheimer's awareness. So it's my honor to welcome Meredith and Katie, and I'll let you have the podium for some additional remarks. Thank you so much, Council, for having us here today. Um, like he had mentioned, the longest day is a signature day of action um, for individuals who are caregivers, individuals who are facing the disease, and um, loved ones who have lost family members to the, the disease. 
Um, there are over 105 participants that are doing the longest day this year in Columbus and surrounding areas alone. And so far, they've raised nearly $185,000 year to date to honor those loved ones to move us closer to an end of Alzheimer's in the future. So thank you so much for recognizing their hard work and the work that the Alzheimer's Association continues to do to, to move closer to that end goal. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for adoption. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Adopt it. Thank you, President Pro Tem. Councilmember Tyson. Yes, I have one, one resolution this evening, and I am going to ask um, Paul Blevins, well, rep all the representatives from the um, Columbus Rotary. So, um, mm. Rick Stoddard, Keith, Jim, Paul, to all walk towards the podium. I have resolution 0193X-2018. It's to honor and to applaud and celebrate the Rotary International Club of Columbus on the occasion of its 106th anniversary. Whereas the Rotary International has membership in excess of 1.2 million with more than 38,000 clubs around the world. Each member and club abiding by the Rotary International motto of service above self. And where, <clears throat> excuse me, and whereas the Rotary International Club of Columbus was chartered May the 5th of 1912 as a 38th club with 22 charter members, some who have descendants that are still active today. Whereas the Columbus Rotary is the 30th largest club in the world with a membership of more than 300 individuals and corporations. Whereas the Columbus Rotary has sponsored 14 other Rotary clubs in Central and Southwest Ohio since its inception in 1912. Whereas the Columbus Rotary continues to exert a positive visible influence in Central Ohio and abroad, supporting projects like its Service Above Self program, which began in 2013, 2003, and this is an annual ongoing partnership with Columbus City Schools that focuses on developing more than 80 community service projects conducted by teams of students from every Columbus, Columbus High School and also from the middle and also from their middle schools. Whereas the Columbus Rotary awards more than $100,000 in annual scholarships to students from Columbus City, to Columbus City Schools. The club also supports the Homeless Family Foundation, as well as the Coleraine Elementary Christmas Project, benefiting children with disabilities. The local club is also deeply involved with supporting the Rafiki International Project which is an orphanage in Kenya that provides services to kids whose parents have died of HIV or AIDS. Now therefore be it resolved by this council of the city of Columbus that this council is hereby honor, applaud, and celebrate the Rotary International Club of Columbus on the occasion of its 106th anniversary. And first I move for adoption. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Adopt it. Thank you, and really I wanna just highlight the work that they do, and I think Paul will talk about this with the Service Above Self program, but you can speak on all your different programs in Columbus, but that one I'm so excited about. We would be so. here a long time if we did that, but <laughs> thank you, Council, and thank you, uh, Councilperson Tyson. We appreciate having gotten to know you better as you come to our Service Above Self Fair the last several years. But Columbus Rotary has been uh, serving Columbus for over 100 years and we are happy to do so, and we look forward to doing it for another 100 years, as you are doing the same. Mm -hmm. Our motto is service above self. Mm -hmm. And so for the past 15 years, we've been working very closely with the Columbus Public Schools and all 21 of their high schools to develop a fair, where this, like a science fair, where students can, can show the service projects that they are doing through their schools. It is only through the, the efforts of the Columbus Public Schools and many of our members that this comes and that a next generation can learn about service to the community and then spread it on throughout the community. With me today, I have Jim Maniachi and Keith Stimpert, who are both chairpersons of our Service Above Self Fair, and Rick Studer, who is our student liaison. 
So we are very proud to be here. We've, we're very proud to be Columbus uh, residents, and we're very happy uh, that to spread the word of service. We thank you. Thank you, um, Paul. And, and we know that the service that the young people are doing in our community, there's absolutely no way that a city could absolute pay for the services that these young people are providing. And so we're so thankful for the work that they're doing in our communities to make our community a, a better place. I also want to recognize, and I think that Rhonda Johnson is um, Director Johnson is here. That Ryan, D Director Johnson is always at these events also. Um, as you know, she's our education director, but she's very much so, so committed to these young people. And again, I thank you for your leadership. Mm -hmm. Any comments from my colleagues? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. I would now ask um, Andrea Orman to come to the podium, please. And Andrea is the uh, Director of Grants and Data Management for Life Care uh, Alliance. And certainly she has a message to share with um, council, the viewing a listening community, um, a very important effort in this community called Beat the Heat. Correct. Angela, Andrea, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation to speak tonight. Um, as we all battle hot weather today, yesterday, and tomorrow, uh, we think and use this opportunity to think about our neighbors and friends, community members who are struggling with the heat. Um, so I do want, just want to share a little bit about Life Care Alliance's Beat the Heat campaign that's going on today and throughout the summer we are collecting box fans um, from the community to distribute right back into the community where, who are members who either um, don't have air conditioning or cannot afford air conditioning to turn it on. Um, we get them a fan so that they can uh, cool their homes. Many of you know, um, you know, in the summer months, a fan can cool a room up to 10 degrees. The, the impact that a fan can have on a person's health and well-being is tremendous. Within the past seven years, there has not been a heat-related death in Columbus because of this, this effort that we have undertaken. Um, we've been doing this for 25 years, and because of this partnership that we have with the um, Columbus Fire Div Division of Fire, along with Lowe's um, and our public media stations, um, television, radio, and print media, we have been able to get the word out where we are collecting fans um, and distributing them right back into our vulnerable community members' homes. I just received a phone call today from a client who did not have air conditioning and is not comfortable opening her windows uh, because of security reasons. So this fan, you know, just goes to show how important it is, important it is to these clients' well-being. If you're interested in getting involved, uh, we encourage you to go out and buy a box fan and drop it off to your nearest fire station or drop it off at our distribution center located at 670 Harmon Avenue from 8.30 to 4 in, during the week. Um, if you need a fan, please call our fan hotline at 614-437-2807 and that message gets updated daily about when our distributions are next. Thank you very much for the opportunity, um, and we appreciate the support. Thank you. So for our viewing and listening audience, if you're able to donate a fan, please do so, uh, and help to make sure that, as you said, the, for the last seven years, we've not had any heat-related deaths. So please donate a fan. And if you're in need of fan, again, um, call the hotline, 614-437-2870. And I donated three fans today and I'm going to hand you a fan right now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilmember Tyson, um, and thank you to Life Care Alliance uh, for that life-saving work. Um, I am, uh, lastly, I have one resolution. I'm going to invite the Columbus Urban League Young Professionals to come forward and their president, Ms. Habiba Bankston. Um, last year, the 
Columbus Urban League Young Professionals instituted a uh, new addition to our, uh, our Columbus cultural scene in a black restaurant week. Uh, many of us participated and went out, and so they are bringing it back again this year. Um, as council president, I'm not able to have favorite organizations in the community, but if I could, if I did, uh, CULYP would be uh, right up at the top of it, uh, for the work that you do uh, in, throughout our neighborhood. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to, to President Bankston to talk about uh, Black Restaurant Week in Columbus, uh, its impact, uh, and just the work that the Urban League is, Columbus Urban League Young Professionals are doing in Columbus. Thank you, President Hardin. And thank you all um, for this recognition and also for the opportunity to be here and to share um, about our Black Restaurant Week initiative. Um, just as our affiliate, the Columbus Urban League, we are committed to empowering the community and changing lives. And we believe that the Black Restaurant Week initiative is a shining example of that commitment. Um, as young people, we know, the, we know the impact of our buying power. And as a collective, we sat down and we said, we really want to find a way to make an investment back into the community. And we established this initiative. Um, the goal was always to educate, mobilize, and empower our peers, as well as the community as a whole to support um, black-owned and minority-owned businesses. Um, so as um, President Hardin said, this is our second year um, hosting Black Restaurant Week. It's currently going on, and it'll go on until the 23rd, I believe. Um, the young lady who actually came up with this initiative is here, Ms. Latoya Peterson. So we hey. have to tip our hats to her because, again, we have such pa passionate and um, talented young professionals within our organization who are really committed um, to the Columbus community. So I had to give her a special shout out, as well as the organization as a whole. Um, as you know, local um, businesses, small businesses especially, they don't necessarily have the time, uh, the capacity, or the means to really promote their businesses the way that they want to. Um, so we knew that doing something like this would really help, uh, again, make an investment in the community um, the way that we really, really wanted to. So we appreciate the continued support that we get from um, council, um, and this recognition really does mean a lot. So thank you. Thank you so much, Madam President. Would you also give a shout out for the uh, conference that is coming to town? We are all very excited to be a big host this, uh, this fall. Yes, so as you all know, the National Urban League um, Annual Conference will be here in Columbus August 1st through the 4th. This is the first time that the City of Columbus will host the conference. Um, it's one of the largest um, gatherings of African Americans for a conference um, in the country, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but this is going to be a very huge thing for the city. We're extremely excited about it. We've been planning tirelessly. Um, uh, President Hightower always says that this is going to be the most epic um, mm. National Urban League Conference, and I do believe that it will be. Um, so hopefully, I'm sure each of you will be present um, to participate and to really show um, the country or just the National Urban League um, how Columbus does it. So it's going to be great, and hopefully each of you will be there. Thank you. And welcome to you, the entire uh, team, your exec board, and, and members of uh, the CULYP. I feel like you guys are here so often that you guys uh, – our, our family in, in this uh, chamber. Uh, so can I get a motion uh, to pass 0192X-2018? Uh, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Arden. Resolution passed. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Are there any uh, comments by our elected officials, city attorneys here, city auditor, city treasurer? Uh, I see that we have several area commissions in the house this evening, Greater, South, uh, Southeast, Hilltop, Clintonville, uh, and Judge Barrows, welcome to council. Yes, sir. Uh, may I have a motion uh, to waive uh, reading of the titles of 30-day legislation by the city clerk? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. Will the clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading? 
Finance Committee Ordinance 1598-2018, Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinances 1510 and 1564-2018, Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 1456, 1526, 1592-2018, Zoning Committee Ordinances 1582, 1596, 1641, 1658, 1670, and 1580-2018. The following ordinances appear on our agenda as consent action. Would the clerk now read those uh, ordinance numbers into the record? Resolutions of Expression 190X, 191X, 194X-2018, Finance Committee Ordinance 1590-2018, Recreation and Parks Committee Ordinance 1552 and 1623-2018, Public Safety Committee Ordinances 1561 and 1566-2018. Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinances 1218, 1445, 1514, 1534, and 1543-2018. Economic Development and Small Business Committee Ordinances 1565, 1634, 1635, 1636-2018. Housing Committee Ordinances 1487, 1513, 1525, 1529, 1630, 1647, 1648, 1649, 1650, 1651, 1652, 1653, and 1654 2018. Judiciary and Court Administration Committee Ordinance 466 2018. Neighborhoods Committee Ordinances 1626 and 1646 2018. Technology Committee Ordinances 1367, 1376, and 1523-2018. Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 1316, 1466, 1483, 1562, and 1563-2018. Health and Human Services Committee, Ordinance 1473-2018. Appointments from the Mayor's Office numbered a0152, 154, 155, 156, 157, 158, 159, and 160-2018. I see we have one speaker for the consent agenda, Mr. Nate Wilkins. I see we're speaking on ordinance 1648-2018. I think that is in housing. Welcome back to council. 1612 Arlington Avenue, Mr. Lathaniel George Wilkins determined solely vacant and abandonment property in North London area. First of all, let me say I'm against uh, the property located at 1557 Republic Avenue. Um, I don't, um, why I'm uh, kind of against this is for a reason. I, uh, I don't know what the property is going to be used for and what's going to be used for maintaining, but what I'm afraid of for any investor to buy the property, to fix it and rehab it, to do higher rental property in the area. So I'm really against something like this now. So thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Mr. Wilkins. Uh, Director, would you please follow up to uh, let Mr. Wilkins know of the land use for uh, 1557 Republic Avenue. Thank you, sir. Uh, seeing no uh, further comments uh, or from speakers, are there any comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, may I get a motion uh, for approval of these items uh, designated as consent action? Clerk, call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown. Mr. Brown? Yes. Page? Yes. Remy? Yes. Stenziano? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Hardin? Yes. Consent action agenda items are passed with the noted exceptions. We will now proceed with the second reading of 30 day tabled in emergency legislation. The first committee to come before council is the Finance Committee. Councilmember Elizabeth Brown is chair. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Hardin. Uh, tonight in finance, we have resolution 0183X-2018 to adopt the 2019 tax budget and to authorize and direct the city auditor to submit said budget to the county and to declare an emergency. Passage of this resolution and the filing of this tax budget with the Franklin, Fairfield, and Delaware County Budget Commissions will fulfill requirements set forth in the Ohio Revised Code for the City of Columbus to receive local government funds money collected by the state of Ohio and shared with political subdivisions like Columbus via the counties.
The Ohio Revised Code requires that a public hearing be held on the tax budget, which will take place at next week's regularly scheduled council meeting. We will hear any public comment at that time. Public notice for this hearing was first published in the City Journal on Saturday, June 9th. In order to accommodate the hearing tonight, I move to table Resolution 0183X-2018 for one week. Second. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Ordinance is table for one week. May I move to Rec and Parks, Council Please. President? Tonight in Recreation and Parks Committee, we have Ordinance 1302-2018 to authorize the Director of the Recreation and Parks Department to enter into contract with Ryder Company to complete the Kogo Bike Share Expansion Project, to authorize the Director of the Recreation and Parks Department to enter into agreements with other municipalities for the Kogo Bike Share Expansion Project, to amend Ordinance 1890-2017 in order to update the amount of the grant and clarify the parties entering into an agreement for the grant funding, to authorize the City Auditor to appropriate $1,147,531 to the Recreation and Parks Grant Fund, to authorize the City Auditor to appropriate $143,000 to the Recreation and Parks Property Management Fund, to authorize City Auditor to transfer $303,263 between projects within Recreation and Parks Voted Bond Fund, to amend the 2018 Capital Improvements Budget, to authorize the expenditure of $1,593,794 from the Recreation and Parks Grant Fund, Property Management Fund, and Voted Bond Fund, and to declare an emergency. Kogo Bike Share launched in 2013 in the downtown core of Columbus, and the service has since expanded from downtown. In 2016, Rec and Parks partnered with Grandview Heights, Upper Arlington, and Bexley to apply for grant funding through Morpsey to expand the network even further. The grant provides 72% of the total cost of the expansion, with the partner communities splitting the remaining costs. The expansion will add 26 stations and 232 bikes, with 13 new stations in Columbus, uh, Fifth by Northwest, Linden, the Near East, Franklin Park, and the University District, to be specific. With these additions, 150,000 residents will be connected uh, within a few minutes of the bike share network. Thank you so much, Director Collins. Um, and is there anything that you'd like to add? Okay, wonderful. Any questions for my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Paige, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. And may I move to education, finally? Please. Okay, great, thanks. Um, Ordinance 1550-2018 to authorize the Director of Education to modify contracts with Columbus State Community College to allow the college to continue providing CDA training to Columbus teachers. This is a program uh, that I'm particularly excited about whenever we have the chance um, to renew it. The City of Columbus has contracted with Columbus State the previous two years to provide an accelerated child development associate program to preschool teachers who are already serving Columbus children. This is a direct, uh, imp the direct impact of workforce investment. The program has been successful with an 84% graduation rate and more than 100 newly CDA certified pre-K educators in Columbus. This ordinance tonight extends the contract with Columbus State for up to one year in order to allow them to continue providing CDA training until they have spent down the balance of funding from the city. Continuing to partner with Columbus State to provide this training is an important component of our overall ongoing commitment to expanding access to quality pre-K education. Its benefits are felt in a number of areas, and its benefits are right in the classroom by improving um, teachers' education. It helps teachers obtain valuable career advancement. It improves the quality of instruction that children receive and it helps develop centers to become step up to quality rated, which they are required to be by the state of Ohio before 2020 if they want to continue to accept publicly funded childcare. The ultimate goal is to have all children in Columbus prepared for success when they enter kindergarten, which directly and strongly impacts their ability to succeed during the rest of their time in school. I want to, uh, as emphatically as possible, thank Director Johnson for her leadership in this area, specifically in the workforce development of our teachers in our city over your career, but specifically in the iteration of your career that's been at the city of Columbus. You've been doing that with pre-K teachers. Um, thank you to you and to your team. And I'm wondering if there's anything that you'd like to add.
biggest predictor of academic success is the quality of the teaching and the class. Thank you so much, Director Johnson. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. That's all I have in my committees, President Hardin. Thank you, Chair Brown. Uh, the next committee to come before council is the Public Safety Committee. Councilmember Mitch Brown is chair. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Hardin. Uh, tonight, uh, Ordinance 1296-2018, to authorize and direct the city auditor to transfer $7,200,902 from the special income tax fund to the fire safety bond fund, to authorize the appropriation of said funds, to waive the competitive provision of the Columbus City Codes, Chapter 329, to authorize and direct the finance and management director to enter contracts with and issue purchase orders to Pierce Manufacturing for the purchase of one custom aerial tiller ladder truck in the amount of $1,309,296, Septon Corporation for the purchase of one aerial platform ladder truck in the amount of $1,200,090.312, Septon Corporation for the purchase of five Monarch custom pumpers in the amount of $3,136,665, and Horton Emergency Vehicles for the purchase of five emergency transport vehicles in the amount of $1,467,629 to amend the 2018 capital improvement budget to authorize the expenditure of a total of $7,200,902 from the safety voted bond fund and to declare an emergency. Uh, at this time, Director Stewart, would you speak to this issue with regards to waive, the waiver of competitive bidding? And I understand Fire Chief O'Connor is here to speak to the issue in more detail. President Council, President Hardin, uh, Vice President, or President Pro Tem, Cinziano, Council Member Brown, uh, that's correct. Uh, I've asked the expert in this field to come up and talk about this. I just get dizzy. Chief? Chief, the floor is yours. Good evening. On behalf of the fire division, what you're seeing here in this $7.2 million is the commitment of both council, um, the citizens of Columbus, to the funding to provide for emergency equipment that's needed in the extremest of conditions. This equipment will replace equipment that we have worked in cooperation with the Department of Finance to establish replacement cycles for. Our average ladder company has a life cycle of 12 years and then five years of reserve status. Um, in addition to that, we also have our engine companies last about eight years, and our medics, because of their frequent use, last about four years. Wow. This requires a frequent um, replacement schedule. This gives our men and women of the Columbus Division of Fire the ability and have the equipment to safely perform actions in extreme situations. In addition to that, this $7.2 million will allow us to continue the operations in multiple neighborhoods. This equipment is scheduled to go into the areas of um, Old Town to Linden, into the University District, into the far north side, the Smoky Row area, the area around Winchester Pike, um, the short north, um, the hilltop, and the far west side. So this is not just one area, this is the entire city of Columbus will benefit from this um, cooperation. We couldn't have done this without the cooperation of council, and um, we want to thank the Department of Finance and Fleet for working with us to establish these schedules to allow us to very predictably enforce this. Um, I can tell you that this is one of the largest capital projects for equipment that the division has seen in decades. Um, in fact, our finance person is saying it's the largest ordinance he's ever written. Um, so that couldn't have happened without the voters of Citizen Columbus giving the capital funds and council supporting that. I can tell you the division <coughs> takes um, pride in that equipment, and we are committed to maintaining that equipment to the best of its standards. One of the things that council supported us with earlier this year, which should come into the city of Columbus hopefully in fourth quarter, is a driving simulator that was obtained with a 90% grant funding. Um, to allow us, allow us to train our personnel to better operate that equipment in a more safe manner, which will allow it to um, have a longer lifespan um, than what it typically would have. So, like I said, on behalf of the Division of Fire, we want to thank you. We couldn't have done this alone. I know one of the questions was in regards to why we went to a competitive bidding process in regard to a state contract instead of an RFP. The reality is, is these ladder trucks at $1.3 million are not just a single piece. They are a chassis, they are a ladder, they are a generator, they are a pumping system, they are a lighting system. All of those components, if we were to put on an RFB, may have to be um, bid in a separate package. 
The state of Ohio has taken the responsibility and done this on a broader scope for all municipalities throughout Ohio and put it on a state term contract. So it allows the citizens of Columbus to get this on a much quicker basis. Because the state term contract exists, we can immediately issue the funds, get this. It's got about a one year turn turnaround time for building, but it would have taken over a year to a year and a half just in the bidding process if we weren't using the state term contract. Hmm. So it is fiscally responsible to use the state contract in regards to this specialized equipment. It is being done at a very competitive price. Most of the companies, what you're seeing, Suffin and Horton, are both local companies based out of um, the Dublin area and the Grove City area. Um, the Pierce manufacturer is a Finley-based representative, so it's an Ohio-based company. So these are local companies as well that we're supporting the economic growth of the citizens of Columbus as well. And I'd be glad to answer any questions anybody happens to have. Uh, are there any questions for my colleagues? Chief, also. Well, Councilmember Tyson. I don't really have a question. I certainly, um, Councilmember Brown, um, thank you for this ordinance. And, um, and to the chief, just really do appreciate, I mean, the comments you just gave about the importance of being on the state contract and what that means for our residents. And so we can get the equipment even faster so that we can also make sure that um, our residents, as well as the individuals operating these vehicles, will be able to have the, the best equipment available and, um, and for our residents, it's always key, safety first, to make sure that um, it's always our number one goal is keep people safe. And so by having um, this particular resolution, um, you know, people certainly hope that they never have to have this equipment come to their house. But if so, we want to make sure we have the best equipment. And so, again, um, Chairman Brown, thank you for this legislation. Thank you. I, I think it's, you heard the chief mention something I think it's really important, which is the simulator. Uh, the device that we got passed, council passed a couple of weeks ago, the value of that so that when you learn how to drive an aerial ladder, how you learn how to drive a pumper, how you learn how to drive an EMS vehicle, uh, all these vehicles require different skill levels, believe me, when they drive through our city uh, so that they don't have issues with accidents and cause other problems. That similar device is going to make a significant difference in the training for all of our personnel, if I'm correct, Chief. Absolutely. Yeah, that training will be initiated across from the recruits all the way through the end of someone's career. This is, gives us the ability, not only is there training when new pieces of equipment come in that's very specific to that piece of equipment, this provides that reiteration of training and continuing education that can start from your first day as a firefighter. One of the things that happens is, is these fire trucks are very, very large. They're larger than most even commercial. Somebody who might have a CDL license would come in and these fire trucks are even different than those. So those simulators give them the ability to practice over and over again and basically have their worst day of driving before they have their worst day of driving. That's our whole goal. If there are no questions uh, from the chief, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you, Chief O'Connor. Uh, President Hardin, that's all I have, but I would like to announce that I'll be conducting a public hearing to discuss panhandling legislation. It's coming Wednesday, June 20th at 3.30 here in Council Chambers. Thank you, Chair Brown. Thank you. The next committee to come before council is the Public Service and Transportation Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Remy. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President Hardin. Tonight in Public Service and Transportation, I have um, Ordinance Number 1497-2018 to appropriate funds within the tr Federal Transportation Grant Fund to amend the 2018 Capital Improvement Budget. <clears throat> excuse me, to transfer funds within the Streets and Highways Bond Fund to authorize the Director of Public Service to enter into contract with Shelley and Sands for the resurfacing urban paving US 33D Spring Street PID 86651 project to authorize the expenditure of up to $1,230,075.55 from the Federal Transportation Grant Fund and up to $555,992.78 from the Streets and Highways Bond Fund to pay for the project and to declare an emergency. This ordinance authorizes the Director of Public Service to enter into contract with Shelley and Sands for the resurfacing urban paving Spring Street project and to provide payment for construction, construction administration, and <clears throat> inspection services. This contract includes resurfacing of US 33, City Corporation limits to Marconi Boulevard and Spring Street, High Street to Cleveland Avenue, and other work as may be necessary to complete the contract in accordance with the plans and specifications set forth in the bid submittal documents. The estimated notice to proceed date is June 26, 2018. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for adoption. 
Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you very much. Our next ordinance is 1559-2018 to authorize the city attorney to file complaints in order to immediately appropriate and accept the remaining fee simple and lesser real estate necessary to timely complete intersection improvements at Main Street and McNaughton Road project and to declare an emergency. Are there any comments or questions from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you. That's all I have in public service and transportation. Thank you, Chair Remy. The next committee to come before council is the Economic Development and Small Business Committee. Council Member Jiza Page is chair. Council Member, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Hardin. This evening in Economic Development and Small Business, we have three pieces that are all concerning the Columbus Regional Energy Special Improvement District. Resolution 0168X-2018 to approve a petition and supplemental plan for the addition of certain real property to the Columbus Regional Energy Special Improvement District under Chapter 1710 of the Ohio Revised Code to authorize the special energy improvement projects to be constructed upon such real property to declare the necessity of acquiring, constructing, and improving certain public improvements in the city in cooperation with the Columbus Regional Energy Special Improvement District and to declare an emergency. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for adoption of Resolution 0168X-2018. Clerk, call the roll, please. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Resolution adopted. Now we have Ordinance 1663-2018 to determine to proceed with levying special assessments for the purpose of acquiring, constructing, and improving certain public improvements in the city in cooperation with the Columbus Regional Energy Special Improvement District and to declare an emergency. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. And the final piece, 1728-2018, to levy special assessments for the purpose of acquiring, constructing, and improving certain public improvements in the city in cooperation with the Columbus Regional Energy Special Improvement District to approve an energy project cooperative agreement and a special assessment agreement in connection with such improvements and special assessments and to declare an emergency. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you, President Hardin. That's all I have this evening. Thank you, Chair Page. The final committee to come before council this evening is the Health and Human Services Committee. Councilmember Tyson is chair. Councilmember Fleur Joris. Thank you. I have one ordinance, Ordinance 1568-2018, to authorize the Board of Health to enter into a contract with Beyond Spots and Dots to implement a culturally informed digital media campaign that promotes the safe sleep practices in the amount of $157,847 and to authorize the expenditure of $157,847 from the Health Department's Grants Fund and to declare an emergency. The Celebrate One Columbus Public Health Infant Sleep Safe campaign will reach thousands of Franklin County residents with information on the ABCs of safe sleep, alone, on your back, and in a crib, to help reduce the number of sleep-related infant deaths. The campaign will use digital strategies such as social media, advertising, and geo-targeting to neighborhoods most impacted by the infant mortality to educate parents, grandparents, caregivers, and the community to encourage behavior change and the compliance of the safe sleep practices and I move for passage Brown Brown Page Remy Stinziano Tyson President Hardin thank you chair Tyson um, that is the final committee and seeing no uh, further business come for this council meeting and I get a motion to adjourn please call the roll Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Uh, meeting is adjourned. We will uh, start uh, zoning at 6.30, uh, and we will take non-agenda speakers momentarily. Regular meeting number 34 will now come to order. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Please call the roll. 
Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Hardin. We will now go to the zoning committee. Uh, Councilmember Tyson chairs this committee and all members serve on it. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you. Before beginning the zoning agenda, I'll briefly explain the rules of council as pertaining to speakers uh, before speaking before council on zonings and variances. We will, per we will permit three speakers on each side, three proponents, three opponents, and we will ask they limit their remarks to three minutes on each side. And we will provide, and, and we provide an opportunity for rebuttal for the applicant. On the advice of the city attorney's office, we ask that anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against any council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. Thank you. The first ordinance is 1244-2018 to rezone 700 Children's Drive being 71.34 acres generally bounded by Interstate 70 and Mooberry Street to the north, the first alley east of and parallel with 18th Street to the east, Livingston Avenue, Jackson Street, and Denton Alley to the south, and South 5th Street to the west, excluding all of Livingston Park, not all inclusive, from I, Institutional and CPD Commercial Plan Development Districts to CPD Commercial Plan Development District. The applicant is Nationwide Children's Hospital. The proposed use is hospital and related uses. And the City Department's recommendation is approval. And the Livingston Area Commission's recommendation was disapproval of one, four, and two. I would now like to have a staff presentation. The site is developed with a hospital complex zoned CPD, Commercial Plan Development District, and the former Afrocentric High School zoned I Institutional District. The requested CPD, Commercial Plan Development District, will amend the existing zoning for Nationwide Children's Hospital by incorporating the former school property into the overall CPD district. The CPD tax maintains the current permitted uses and development standards of the existing CPD district while providing some clarifications and creating a new CPD district boundary. The proposed modification to the CPD district would allow for orderly expansion of the hospital and associated facilities is consistent with the development and zoning patterns of the area and proposes no changes of substance to the CPD plan and text besides the addition of 7.45 acres. Therefore, City's Department's recommendation is for approval and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank you. I also want to mention that the Columbus South Side Air Commission's recommendation is on this particular um, legislation was 12 to zero and that um, Jill Tangman is the attorney. I would now like to have a um, presentation from the applicant or representative of the applicant. Good evening, President Hardin, members of council. Thank you for this opportunity to speak today. Uh, the subject rezoning is actually concerns really a small part of the main campus for Children's Hospital. Uh, it is the former Afrocentric school site. Um, uh, several years ago, the hospital acquired the Afrocentric athletic fields uh, and have started construction on that property um, and at the corner of, Gay, of uh, Grant and Livingston. And um, they are acquiring this property to the west um, and development will be in, in similar fashion to what is on the opposite side of the road. Um, Immediately, the hospital intends to use the property for parking. I'm sure as many of you know, parking is always an issue for Children's Hospital, um, and especially uh, at times we have had patients and employees that park into German Village, Marion Village. So providing parking areas um, on this property, um, at least in the short term, will be very beneficial to removing any additional parking on neighborhood streets. Um, the long-term plan is, of course, to use the property for hospital uses, um, and we, although we don't know exactly what type of um, hospital building will be located on there, it will be in similar fashion to what we placed on the Afrocentric uh, athletic fields. 
Um, I know there's a number of speakers this evening. Um, we, as a courtesy, met with um, all of the various neighborhood groups and area commissions, um, including Columbus Southside, Livingston Avenue Area Commission, German Village, Marion Village. Um, this particular piece of property is actually not in the jurisdiction of any area commission or neighborhood group. But because when we rezone, we rezone the entire campus, so all of our zoning is encompassed in one ordinance, we, um, as a courtesy, make sure that we go and visit with all of the neighborhood groups. Um, so I will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions for Attorney Tang Tangman? Saying none. Okay, I will have um, the first speaker who is for this ordinance is is Jason Hattel. And he represent, well, he can, can share who you represent when you come to the podium. Thank you. Councilmember Tyson, members of council, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, I serve as the president of the Livingston Park Neighborhood Improvement Association. I'm here to speak on behalf of our residents. Um, our neighborhood includes the areas bordered by 3rd Street, Interstate 70, Ohio Avenue, and Livingston Avenue. All of the Afrocentric properties and most of Nationwide Children's Hospital's main campus fall within our borders. In early February, we received notice that Nationwide Children's Hospital intended to convert three residential parcels into hospital zoning and demolish six residential units. They also announced a formal plan to change the Afrocentric school property to hospital zoning for future development with that same request. Um, their immediate intent was to replace houses in our neighborhood with a parking lot, and we believed these properties should be preserved to maintain the historic mixed-use urban fabric of the Livingston Corridor, and they represented the demolition of six potentially affordable housing units in our community. <clears throat> Through collaboration with Livingston Park neighborhood residents, our neighbors in Old Oaks and surrounding neighborhoods, Columbus Landmarks Foundation, and the Young Ohio Preservationists, our team compiled a detailed presentation and worked extensively with Nationwide Children's Hospital to discuss alternatives for their proposed parking lot. Our Civic Association was thrilled when they agreed to address the original parking concerns with proposed alternatives, remove the three parcels from this request that you're discussing tonight, and um, study the parcels that we were concerned about for future use, and most importantly, commit to ex the expansion of healthy homes, affordable housing initiatives into our neighborhood and other Near East and Southside neighborhoods. The Livingston Avenue Area Commission's disapproval does not represent all of the citizens of this immediate area. The Livingston Avenue neighborhood residents voted unanimously to support rezoning of the institutional Afrocentric school parcels. We believe Nationwide Children's Hospital's commitment to affordable housing embedded within our neighborhood is the right one. We also believe the Afrocentric lots are best suited for future hospital development. We ask that you consider the strong support of Livingston Park neighborhood residents when you review this zoning request. Apart from my role as president, I have over 24 years in the housing industry. Uh, I'm a licensed real estate broker, small business owner, and I serve as the current co-chair of the Columbus Realtors Affordable Housing Committee. While I'm clearly not here to represent that body today, um, I personally and professionally support affordable housing initiatives that are fully integrated into market rate housing neighborhoods for economic diversity. The isolated school parcels nestled between the freeway and a commercial corridor are best suited for mixed commercial and hospital development. Any questions? Any questions? Seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Hottel, for coming down, and certainly thank you for your commitment to affordable housing. Our next speaker would be um, Mr. David Gray. Good evening, Mr. Gray. Hello. Hi. Council Member Tyson, members of Council, I want to thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight. As member of the Old Oaks Civic Association, I am here tonight to show support for the rezoning that Nationwide Children's Hospital 
is seeking for the institutional parcels, the former half eccentric school to, hosp to hospital zoning. Angela Mingo, Community Relations Director for Nationwide Children's Hospital, presented the updated rezoning plans for the hospital at the March 13, 2018 Livingston Park Neighborhood Improvement Association meeting. These revised plans met with the satisfaction of both the Livingston Park Neighborhood Improvement Association as well as the Old Oak Civic Association. I am impressed with the plans, but I'm equally impressed, and I want to say that again, I'm equally impressed that Nationwide Children's Hospital heard the concerns of the Livingston Park Neighborhood Improvement Association, the community that sits directly east of Nationwide Children's Hospital, and modified the rezoning plans to make the request a win-win situation for both groups who will be directly impacted by the rezoning. In the nearly 30 years that I have lived in Old Oaks Historic District, I have experienced firsthand the numerous ways in which Nationwide Children's Hospital has been not a good neighbor, but a great neighbor. And throughout the years, I have witnessed the growth of Nationwide Children's Hospital, and each step of the way, they have made it a point to include the communities that surround the hospital campus in the decision process. The growth of Nationwide Children's Hospital, the increase of jobs, the Healthy Homes Initiative, and the revitalization that has come about due to this growth has enhanced our neighborhood, and Old Oak Civic Association is convinced the rezoning will add to the continual revitalization of the near southeast side neighborhoods. Therefore, it is with enthusiasm that the Old Oak Civic Association supports the rezoning that Nationwide Children's Hospital is seeking. Thank you. Any questions? Questions, my colleagues? No? Thank you, for Mr. Gray, for coming down. And um, I now would ask Terry Elliott, who is representing the Livingston Avenue Area Commission, Lava C. She is the chairman and president of Lava C. Good evening, Ms. Elliott. Good evening, council members, Councilwoman Tyson. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. Mm -hmm. I come before you in favor of the legislation tonight. Um, as you know, on March 20th, the Livingston Avenue Area Commission did turn down the zoning requested by the uh, Nationwide Children's Hospital. We had a couple of reasons for that, um, and I'm not going to go into those right now because I am here in support of them. I would like to thank Angela because we have met several times over the last couple of months, and she has worked to satisfy the needs of all of our communities. So the two gentlemen before you represent two of the communities within the Livingston Avenue Area Commission boundaries. There are four communities, and uh, I am here in support of all four communities, but I also work in support of all four communities. And at the onset of this, uh, part of our communities was not really satisfied with the rezoning. Um, after several meetings with Angela, she has addressed the needs of our communities. She has agreed to bring the affordable housing, healthy homes to our communities, which I'm pleased with because I have been working for five years for that to happen. So I'm very pleased with that. Uh, I'm also pleased that she has agreed to um, in whatever means she can, work with the Gertrude Woods Foundation and the Area Business Commission, Area Business Association, LABA. So she has tried to meet the needs of the community. I appreciate that, and I am in support. Any questions? Thank you. I, I want to say, Commissioner, thank you um, for coming down and sharing your, your comments. And also, um, it's certainly, I have appreciated the opportunity to work with you as the um, chairperson. Certainly, I've had the opportunity to work with um, Ms. Mingo. And um, I'm so happy that we have gotten to a place where there is support um, for this, for, um, for the legislation that's presented tonight. And thank you for everyone working together. And I am very excited about the healthy homes. I know that it was in that area, but again, 
um, from someone who put about $1.7 million into the roofing to the um, James Johnson program for roofs in the driving park area. It is an important community um, in the city of Columbus. And so I appreciate that, the Healthy Homes um, expansion within that neighborhood. And, um, oh, and now we'll have a rebuttal. Is there anything that you would like to come back up and say, Attorney Tangman? Thank you. We're pleased that we were able to work with all the communities and hear their concerns and, and reach a place of a commonality. And we continue uh, to work with these neighborhoods and look forward to future projects. Be happy to answer any questions. I don't have any questions. Again, thank you. And I am um, happy that I know that Nationwide Children's will be working with all the communities and listening to their concerns and, and also um, and giving comments when they're doing great work too. So they want to hear not just complaints, but they also want to hear that we're doing good work. So again, thank you. And so I thank my colleagues for taking the time also to listen to um, some of the concerns that the community has had. And I know they're happy for the a successful resolution. And so I would thank I'm going to move for passage. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. The ordinance passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1451-2018 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3356.03 C4 permitted uses, 3312.21 ABD landscaping and screening, 3312.274 parking setback line, 3312.49 C minimum numbers of parking spaces required, 3372.604 A setback requirements of Columbus City Codes for the property located at 30, 3479 North High Street to permit mixed-use development with reduced development standards in the C4 commercial district. The applicant is the Kelly Companies, uh, the proposed, proposed in care of Dave Perry. The proposed use is a mixed-use development. The city department's recommendation is approval. The Clintonville Area Commission's recommendation is, a, is approval. Five zero to five zero three. I first move to amend to emergency. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is. Is ordinance 15, 1578-2018 to rezone 1700 Old Leonard Avenue being point, <clears throat> excuse me, point four one acres located in the northeast corner of Old Leonard Avenue and Parkwood Avenue from CPD commercial this plan, commercial plan district to see our commercial district. The applicant is Terry Taster and um, in care of Chris Vallette, the architect. The proposed use is a commercial development. The C department's recommendation is approval and the North Central Air Commission's recommendation is nine to zero. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stenziano, Tyson, President Hardin. Pass. Thank you. And the last ordinance this evening is ordinance number 1579-2018 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3355.03 C C3 permitted uses and 3355.09 C3 district setback lines of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 1700 Old Leonard Avenue to permit an industrial kitchen and storage uh, garage for food trucks with the reduced building line in the C3 commercial district. And the, um, the applicant is Chris Vallette, 
the proposed use is an industrial kitchen and storage garage for food trucks. The city department's recommendation is approval and the North Central Air Commission's recommendation was nine to zero. And this is a part of ECDI and we're really excited for ECDI to be, if this passes, to be expanded um, to allow more um, um, entrepreneurs to be able to get the skills that they need to be able to have um, um, to grow their businesses with this with this industrial kitchen and then again the storage garage for the food trucks So um, again the approval for the Com North Air Commission was nine to zero and I would now move for passage Please call the roll Brown Brown Page Remy Stinziano Tyson President Hardin pass. Thank you. That's all I have in my committee Thank you chair Tyson um, Can I get a motion to adjourn uh, the zoning committee meeting? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Page, Remy, Stinziano, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. We stand adjourned.